later and at immigration they were like okay what are you coming to do here and i'm like oh you were just here what are you coming to do here again so i'm like oh no 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 i'm here to see my family again i'm in my gap year so i enjoyed it so much and that's why i am back and they're like okay are you here to work i'm like no me work no nope. did you work when you were here no nope. didn't work when i was here <laughs> So they're like, okay, so we're just going to call your family and just make sure that everything you are saying is correct. And they went and they did that. And I was waiting for a little while. Then I saw the immigration officer carrying the envelope Ooh. that I had yeah. hidden in my, <laughs> in my suitcase. So they got hold of my suitcase, carrying the envelope. And he was walking back with the envelope. And I was like, oh, I am in hot water. So I had to give a um, Oscar performance. So he comes and he says, okay, so what's this? So I'm like, it's photos of myself. Don't you keep photos of yourself? I think I was a bit cheeky though. <laughs> and he was like, no, I don't. And I'm like, well, I do. And then he looks, he says, but these photos look like um, uh, modeling photos. Are you here to model? And he's and then I'm like, no, I'm not here to model. I'm just here to spend time with family. And then he's like, I think you are here to work. <laughs> wow. I'm deported. And that's how I spent time. I spent time in a, um, in a cell at the airport. I'm waiting to be deported. And, um, and that's how I got deported. So I came back into the country and I went under hiding for a while because I was so embarrassed by what happened and I really didn't know what was going to happen with my life. Um, but I was very fortunate, um, before I left for London to have met a writer, director, producer, by the name of um, Mickey Dube. Mm. Um, and he gave me an opportunity to shadow him behind the scenes. He was like, ah, stop thinking about just being on screen. What about behind the scenes? And I, but I was quite mad at that. So I was like, so you saying I'm not going to make it on screen, you know, why should I go? And he was like, there's more longevity if you go behind the scenes, like spread your wings and not just stay focused on, because I was, I, I believed, well, people, the cameras that came kept coming to me kept be, made me believe that I was going to become a star on television, um, even though I didn't feel I had the calling to be on television. So that's how I started uh, shadowing him behind the scenes. He was doing at the time, he was doing governmental um, documentaries, like educational things about um, different industries. Um, and that's how we traveled around South Africa together. And I was the one who was helping him with the questions. <laughs> mm. Quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I was helping him with the questions. We would be on the, in, in the middle of the ocean sea um, interviewing a fisherman, you know. Mm. And I was helping with the questions. And then I was doing tape logging. Um, at the time, I, I, there were no fancy um, what's machinery, so you had to. I had to write down every single thing and the time code in, the time code out, you know. Uh, and then after I finished with him, he wrote me a referral re letter to join um, Red Pepper Pictures mm. um, as an assistant, um, you know. And that's how I joined. Um, red pepper pictures eventually I had to push 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 you know I kept calling them please can I have sorry please can I have um, you know I would like to come in as a, an assistant or an intern or whatever whatever um, and then I think like after a month I was like is it a yes or a yes and then finally the HR um, man said okay come and that's how I started working on crazy as a production assistant. Now, what was nice when I started working on Crazy, which is still on now, that was like 2002, was that 
I was just not the office assistant. Um, you know, I got to learn about um, doing call sheets. I got to learn about, um, you know, preparing for a shoot, calling in the presenters, calling in the crew. Um, and then in studio, I got to learn how to auto queue operate, you know, how to floor manage. Um, I even helped out with props, you name it, you know. So I got a lot of um, exposure in terms of work-wise behind the scenes, um, especially for studio. And it was while I was there, um, there was a lady, I think I'd been there six months. She said to me, um, are, you, are you interested in working on dramas? And I don't even think I knew what dramas were. And I was like, um, she said she's got a friend that is looking for a production coordinator <coughs> for a drama series <clears throat> called Justice for All, a law drama series. So I was like, okay, yes, yeah, sure, hook me up. And she hooked me up because um, that friend of hers actually had a crew agency. So the crew agency, they employ... Um, crew you know so I got signed up to the crew agency and I got I went for the interview for the job and I got it and that's how I left Red Pepper as a production assistant for six months and I moved on to production coordinator then I became I was lucky then because even though my superiors the line producers and the production manager they were white but they trained me and they trained me in, to do exactly what they wanted to do. And from that job, I got another job and that job, another job. And it went on like that, etc. And I re really became great at production coordinating. I worked on many dramas. I even went back and worked with, with Mickey on his short film um uh and when i worked with mickey on his short film the producer happened to be the producer of the feature film drum du he's now late dumisani um damini and at the time they had just finished shooting drum so i met the tay deeks like i w would socialize with the tay deeks and i was just being exposed to all these people so Throughout my career, what started happening, I started realizing it was like, it was connection after connection out of connection. And if you really do great at your last gig, then, you know, your word, even your name even gets spread even more, you know? So mm -hmm. that's how I got gig after gig after gig after gig after gig. And then um, when, I, when I wanted to transition from production coordinator to production manager, um, that is when it becomes a bit tricky. You go out of work for a little while longer mm -hmm. because everybody's so used to you being a, playing the one role, you know, mm -hmm. um, everyone was so used to me playing, um, production coordinator. So when my son, my first son was born, um, 10 years, uh, before he was born, when I was pregnant with him about, um, actually just before I was pregnant with him. When, um, uh, just over 10 years ago, I worked, I was um, asked to work with David Max Brown um, on Hillside. And um, actually my connection through David Max Brown was through Tandy Zwana, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's when I, when I got that gig, I worked with them. Um, I finished the gig. Um, was pregnant and then when after i had my baby um i think it was like about two months david max Brown was like come and production manage and i was like that was my first production managing gig i was like production manage i've never done it before as much as i wanted to move into it so he gave me an opportunity to production manage um the manuscripts of timbuktu and it was just him and I that worked together. I was production managing. I was working with my baby in the office, you know, <laughs> breastfeeding, everything. Everybody was helping around in the office, even him. Um, I was going to Fordsburg to do the casting. So we were like an all-in-one 
um, type of, you know, team. And yeah, so that's how I transitioned from production um, coordinator to production manager. Then I started working. After that, I just started working on all sorts of shows, you know. I worked for Bond Free Media on um, Nancy Plain Street, on I Am Mzansi, um, on a lot of Love Life um, productions for Born Free Media. Um, I went on to work on Late Night with Komutso, with Komutso Matsunyani, um, and Akin, and um, Rob Thorpe. Um, Thorpe. And um, I got exposed to, like, more people and, mm. you know, more more connections you know mm. so after i left late night with komuto i went again to work with david max brown on another film with teddy matera mm. yeah and then production managing production managing and then um about three years ago because while i was production managing while i was doing production there was something that i was always doing So about three years ago, um, when I was just more than three years ago, when I was pregnant with my, um, second born son, um, everybody was like, why don't you start a company? Why don't you start? Why don't you produce? Why don't you do? Why don't you, why don't you, everybody is like, why don't you, why don't you? And then I was like, actually, wait a minute. It's like. I think for my whole career in television and film, I've been listening to everybody's voice telling me about what I should do. But what I've always loved doing and I've always done while in my career in between, but never taken seriously, is writing. So um, when I first started out at Crazy, I was very fortunate to have met um, a lot of celebrities um but the one day brenda fassi came with her entourage and she came with an editor she came with a lawyer she came with a bodyguard you know she came with all these people so it so happened that while we were trying to record her i was behind the scenes and i was um having a chat with the editor of a newspaper and um, when he told me that he was an editor of a newspaper, I was like, oh, I love writing, you know, can I write for you? You know, actually I've written some articles. I think by then I'd already written some articles. I used to like writing opinion articles. 